I want to look at uh, Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9 and verse uh, 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, this is the Lord Jesus Christ and his disciples, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. In other words, I'm going to follow thee wherever thou dost go. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. In other words, what he's saying is, have you counted the cost of discipleship following me? And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. In other words, permit or allow me to go first and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, ha having put his hand to the plough, <coughs> and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two by t uh, two and two before his face into every city and place, whither or where he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the labourers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth labourers into his harvest. And that's what I pray especially here for the land down under and everywhere throughout the whole world. But we need to pray that the Lord will send forth, forth labourers into his harvest. In other words, people that will get out there on the streets and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ under the people, whether it's here in the land down under or overseas, doesn't matter, throughout the whole world. We need to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. This is the only way of salvation. The only way that you and I can be redeemed, that is bought back by the price that's been paid, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Yes, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. There's not many people out there preaching the gospel of Christ unto the people. And we need more people. And this, if you're a believer and you're listening to this message right now, you need to take heed to this. We need to get out there and preach the gospel of Christ. Now, I'm not talking to the women, to the sisters, in, to our sisters in Christ. I'm talking to our brothers in Christ. We should be getting out there and preaching the gospel, proclaiming as a public uh, crier, heralding the message of salvation, the message of life, the message of the love of God for us sinners. When we're born in this world, we're born as sinners. Now you and I have to realise that first of all. If we don't, if we're not a sinner, we don't need salvation. But I'm here to tell you this afternoon that we are all sinners in the sight of the Lord. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is not a just man upon, on the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So we need to understand our sinfulness and our guiltiness of sin before the Lord. And that's the first step of salvation. And then we need to come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul be saved. Saved from the wrath of God, saved from hell and the lake of fire and brimstone or fire and sulfur for all of eternity. We will go there if we do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. God is warning you this afternoon. Flee from the wrath which is to come. God is angry with the wicked every day, and yet he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. 
Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give, for the labourer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh or near unto you. But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city which cleaveth to us, in other words, clings to us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding. Be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh or near unto you. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable in the day, uh, in that day for Sodom than for that city. In other words, for those who were, were Sodomites in Sodom and Gomorrah, and don't forget, fire and brimstone came, or fire and sulphur came down from the Lord out of heaven and devoured those people of Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sodomy. But it's going to be more tolerable in the, in that day for Sodom than for that city. Why? Because they were so blessed. They were so advantaged to have the person of the Lord Jesus Christ with them, among them, doing those great miracles which he performed. You know, not only healing people, but saving their souls and uh, raising the dead even. That's an amazing thing to do. And we know that he is God, and that's the proof that he is God, because he could raise the dead uh, raise people from the dead. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Zidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Zidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shalt be thrust down to hell. In other words, they've been uh, exalted to heaven in the sense of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the um, Prince of Life, was amongst them on earth, and they had rejected their Messiah. They did not receive the Lord Jesus Christ for who he really is. And who is he? He's the son of the living God. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. The king of Israel. And yes, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why not get right with God now? Why not receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour right now? As you listen to this message, this is an urgent message. I keep on saying this. This is an urgent message. You need to get right with God, and you need to get right with God now. Yes, woe unto the Chorazin, woe unto the Bethsaida, for the mighty works uh, had been done in Tyre and Zidon, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Zidon at the judgment than for you. And thou Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shalt be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. In other words, we're despising the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. You see, the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is he your Saviour? You need to make him yours personally. Otherwise, you'll end up dying and going down to hell. God does not want you to go down to hell, my friend. He wants to save your soul this afternoon. Now, what you need to do is put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You need to come in repentance toward God, as I've said. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, in other words, on snakes and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I wonder, is your name written in heaven? You need to have your name written in heaven, my friend. Otherwise, when, when you die, you'll end up going down to hell. God does not want that for you, my friend. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Just change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your soul will be saved. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth uh, who the Father is, sorry, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. How privileged were the disciples to hear and to be in the presence of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Saviour of sinners. You and I need salvation for our sins. You and I need forgiveness for our sins. And the only way of forgiveness is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who loved us enough to die upon the cross for you and for me. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The man who said that could say, of whom I am chief. And if the chief of sinners has been saved, you also can be saved, my friend. No matter how low you sunk in, in uh, the degradingness of sin, if that's a word, you can be saved by the grace of God through faith in the Son of God. The Lord Jesus Christ loved us enough to die upon the cross for you and for me, in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Have your sins been forgiven? Have your sins been washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot? Oh, my friend, he can be your saviour this afternoon. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't die without the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you'll be in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell. He wants you to be in heaven. The only way you can get to heaven is through the once-for-all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ loved us enough to give his life a ransom for all to be testified in due time. I wonder, is your soul saved? Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on that broad road that leads down to hell and destruction. God wants you to get off that road, that broad road, if you like, the highway to hell. He wants you to get off that highway onto the narrow road that leads under heaven. The way off is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who has made sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 
So again, what do you need to do? Come in repentance toward God, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul be saved. Yes, it, uh, John 10 verse 9 says, I am the door. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. I wonder, have you found that pasture, that satisfaction, that forgiveness for your sins that can only come through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Again, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That can be yours right now if you come in repentance toward God, as I've said, change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. Have a great night. And if you're interested in, in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great night.